well met and merry rainstorms and darkening season to you if you, like me, reside somewhere that enjoys such things at this time of the year. I am finding myself with a desire to make myself a new shift, and in honor of the month of October, it shall be all the techniques we are used to from historically hand-sewn shirts and shifts, only black. You may wonder why I did not specify a time period in this video, like 16th century Elizabethan collar shift or 18th century pirate shirt. And the truth to that is that there are so many cultures that made use of some variation of the high collared shirt and shift throughout history, including rural farming villages in Norway all the way into the 20th century, that it seemed easier to just forego such restrictions as any particular century in any particular location. In short, poofy sleeved shirts and shifts for everyone. And as I like to challenge myself geometrically, I am limiting myself to a piece of 2 meters by 1.5 meters of soft linen. It would surprise nobody who knows me that before cutting could commence, I sat down with a grid paper and sketched out a couple of cutting suggestions before landing on the one you see on screen in front of you. I'll leave a high resolution picture on my website should you wish to peruse it in more detail, but otherwise we shan't spend more time on it. This version is ridiculously oversized in the body for me, and you could easily make the body narrower to make room for even poofier sleeves, or wider cuffs and collars should that be something you require. Since our fabrics are so much wider now than historical fabrics were, we have a lot more leeway in that way. Plan in hand, I sat down to pull thread. Or that tedious process by which we pull out a single thread from our fabric, providing us in turn with a marvelously straight line to uh, attempt to follow with our scissors. A background in high contrast to the fabric can help this process immensely. The only pieces that are not cut by pulling thread are our four gores for glorious swoosh, since triangles don't tend to follow the warp and weft of a fabric all that closely. All of our gores are sewn to each bottom corner of the body of our shift, but with a bias edge of the gore facing the straight grain edge of the body for limited bias stretch. Beyond this prep though, we are leaving the side seams open for a while longer. The gores can either be backstitched or running backstitched depending on time and preference. I am chaos and employed a smattering of both. Gores in place, I like to lay down the seams as I work so that it's all done. Fair word of warning though, laying down the seams before you're done stitching on all the gores can, and often will, lead to confusion as to which side is out and which side is in for the attachment of subsequent gores. That done, I turned to what will become the ties of our cuffs and collar, folding the edges in on itself and stitching them together into nice little ties. Only to later remember that the edges of the ties will be visible, so let's go back with our seam ripper just at the beginning and fold that in as well. The bottom of the sleeves are left with an opening roughly two matchstick boxes long for ease of inserting one's hand, and our helpful gusset is attached to the other end. I like to stitch one side of the gusset down before pinning the rest, but make sure you leave a seam allowance before and after your stitches. For these more utilized seams, I'll backstitch exclusively. Mm -hmm. 
a new day is dawning and our sleeve is halfway there already. Next, I ran a single gathering thread through the bottom of my sleeve and marked the halfway and quarter way points before moving on to the cuffs. One of our freshly made ties are cut in half before set cuffs are folded and, for some reason, stitched from the outside. This turned out neat and all, but I'm not sure why I didn't just pin everything from the inside and backstitch it as you would expect. Maybe do that instead. In my eagerness to continue working on these cute little cuffs, I thought it would be a good idea to top stitch them before attaching them to the sleeves. Spoiler alert, that was not wise, as it made folding the cuff neatly in on itself all the trickier. Don't do that. After preparing the cuffs, I somewhat begrudgingly realized that I do want my sleeves to be gathered in something ever so slightly more organized than pure unadulterated chaos, so I went back through my sleeve and added a second gathering thread, painstakingly doing my best to make the stitches parallel to the first. Then the cuff, just like the sleeve, has its halfway and quarterway points marked before pinning each point to its corresponding partner after which gathering and subsequent overuse of pins may commence. For the opposing side of the cuff, our sleeve is turned, the edge is folded under, and each tiny gather is stitched into place. Our poofy sleeve is still too large for our arm size and ease of movement, so let's do that fun thing where we gather only a section of the sleeve rather than the whole thing sans gusset. Sleeves thus finished, it is time to tackle the part I have been avoiding all this time the neckline and the collar. Having been a bit overeager in the cutting of necklines in the past, and in one instance ending up replacing the entire top section with a new bit of linen to make it more comfortable, you can understand my slight apprehension to this part. Still, we must press on. For the neckline, I have measured from the side of my neck how far down my shoulder I want the shoulder seam to go. The rest will be cut open and gathered. Unlike all other edges on this shift, I'm doing up just the front neck slit with a tiny rolled hem. To reinforce the weakness where we just cut, I am cutting two tiny reinforcement patches out of the fabric we just cut from our neckline. This linen is more slippery than most, and is unwilling to hold the fold, so I'm pinning it down into this monstrosity before doing my best to stitch it onto our front opening. Unsurprisingly, the collar is attached much like the cuffs. With the neckline complete, we can move on to attaching our sleeves and sew up the side seams. Sleeves being sleeves, we must accept their chaotic nature by turning our main body inside out and placing the sleeve, right side out, inside for pinning. Just like when attaching the gusset to the sleeve, the two remaining sides of the gusset is pinned into the side of the garment with copious amounts of pins and seam allowance. And look, because each gore is just an extension of the main body and not a singular triangle on either side, there is no fiddly nonsense where we try to match the top of a triangular gore to the bottom corner of the gusset. For the sewing, I like to start at set gusset bottom edge, 
as by the time I've made my way all the way around the sleeve, I'll be exactly where I need to be to stitch up the rest of the side seam. This is how I prefer to finish all my shifts. Doing the side seams last and from the top down, as I find that any bubbling, unevenness or slight movement of the fabric that can ensue as we work will simply end up at the bottom of the shift and fold it into the hem. Just at the tightly cartridge pleated top of our sleeve, the fabric was simply too thick to tolerate any sort of folding. So I ended up salvaging two strips from the neckline offcut and using them to bind just that small area. With these two pieces of binding, our leftover fabric from this project has shrunk to very nearly zero. And with that, we only need to hem the bottom edge of our shift for it to be complete. Since this linen came to me with the intense luxury of being both pre-washed and softened, I am happy to report that this shift is, indeed, as deliciously comfortable as I hoped it would be. Unfortunately, I did end up making the collar and cuffs too wide, despite measuring efforts to the contrary. Don't worry though, this was quickly solved by removing the ties again and replacing it with shell buttons and hand-sewn buttonholes. Perhaps next time, I won't be so nervous about making them too tiny that I end up overshooting by a small mile. 